Hey guys, today I'm going to show you an ancient pillar manufacturing site, a mass manufacturing factory with more than 100 different pillars and most of them are lathe turned pillars. Let's go closer and take a better look. I will show you more pillars nearby, but here you can see at least 20 pillars. You realize that these are quite exotic. Archaeologists confirm that yes, you need a lathe machine, a rotating mechanism to make such pillars. You can see a lot of scrawling on the stones. These were done by vandals. This is why now they have put these barricades and prevented anyone from taking a closer look. I really wish I could get inside and examine them better and can also show some good details to you. I have shown you finished and assembled pillars set up in ancient temples, but to see a bunch of these freestanding pillars is a rare sight. Many people argue that pillars and temple parts would be made on site, but I think they were usually made in a different location. It's usually a centralized location, an ancient megalithic manufacturing factory. I've shown you one in Warangal Fort. It's also a fantastic place where you can see a variety of temple parts strewn in one place. So these parts would then be transported to the temple site and then assembled. If you see the pillar in the middle, this is a male pillar because it has a projection on top and it will fit onto another female block. But this one is a female, it does not have a projection, but it probably has a hole on top. So the ancient builders must have planned the assembling parts very well. Notice that each pillar is different from any other pillar. They look similar, but you can pause or rewind and check these pillars. Each one is actually different from other pillars. Now, nearby, we can see more pillars. You are looking at at least 25 different pillars and you may have realized that none of them are the same. Each and every pillar is different. Actually, at the back, we can see more pillars, but again, each one is different. These pillars are anywhere from three feet to seven feet tall. Here is a fabulous pillar, which looks like a long gear shaft. Imagine what kind of machining technique and mechanism would have been needed to make this. Let's see what is on top of this. A perfect square hole. So this is a female pillar. Now, what are we looking at, right? We are looking at a spare part, like an extra screw lying around in a garage. It was just a backup. It was never polished and used. Some of this pillar's sisters are fit inside the temple and they look incredible after polishing and when assembled with other stone blocks. Okay, I know that you're immediately going to be attracted to this stone tank, but I'm not going to explain this because it can be anywhere from 100 years old to 900 years old. I just don't know how old this is. But you can see at least a hundred pillars propped up on the wall back there. Those are all belonging to the ancient period, at least 900 years old. And this is why I say they were mass manufacturing them, like how we make auto parts in a factory. Obviously, they were not made on demand because a hundred stone pillars, each weighing at least one ton, would not be lying here. They were never assembled. They were just manufactured as spares. And I'm sure some were never used because of manufacturing defects. This is not limited to pillars. You can also see other parts lying around in this area. Okay, so they manufactured these parts, but did they assemble them? 
just for testing purposes. Archaeologists have confirmed that ancient builders built small-scale models of temples, and this is one of them. And this is just a model, but it's full of lathe-turned pillars. There's not much carvings or statues here, but it was just a practice area where they could try on lathe-turned pillars and assemble them along with the ceiling and other parts. There's never been any idols installed here or rituals done here. You can see at least 25 lathe-turned pillars. Some of these pillars also have intricate designs on them. Yeah, you may think the ceiling looks awesome for a model temple, but wait until I show you the ceiling of the actual temple. This model temple is situated right behind the Chenake Sava temple. Now, the real problem with these hundreds of spare lathe pillars lying around is that it proves it was not difficult for the ancient builders to make these lathe pillars. Let me show you an example outside the temple, right? If we go into this area, this is just a remote corner with no carvings or statues, but look at the pillars. Today, we think these are extraordinary pillars because it must have been so difficult to create them using lathe technology back then. But for them, this was the model by default, meaning if you went to an ancient sculptor 900 years ago in this area and you asked him to make any type of pillar, he did not give you a four-sided pillar or a crude column he would make you a lathe-turned pillar. This is why every pillar made by the original ancient builders is looking like this. When the future generations came around 1500 AD, they expanded the temple. But look at their pillars. This is how normal people with chisels and hammers make pillars. This is not only true 500 years ago, but if you go to an architect today, and if you want a stone pillar for your house, this is how he's going to make it for you. He's not going to mount a huge rock on a lathe machine and make you those perfect cylindrical pillars, because it's quite difficult to do this, even with modern machines. But somehow, this ancient machining technology was lost. This is why all the medieval pillars made 500 years ago in the same temple are all square or cuboid pillars. Even though these pillars are fully visible and are going to be seen by everyone, this is the best the medieval sculptors could do. But 900 years ago, in remote places, even in places where nobody is going to see, the original ancient builders put only lathe-turned pillars. This means it was really easy, and they were making them like this by default using advanced technology. This is why you see these spectacular pillars just as supportive pillars. I mean, they made giant, fantastic lathe-turned pillars, but did not even care that they will be hidden inside the walls. They were just supporting structures, yet they made them using lathe machines. And some pillars, they're really, really big. This one is at least 20 feet tall and three feet wide. This is unimaginably big. And yes, you have to use a rotating mechanism to make such a pillar. You can achieve this only using a lathe machine. But here, it's a size that's mind boggling, right? I mean, today there are small lathe machines which can make tiny things and large lathe machines making bigger jobs, and we need giant ones to make the giant stuff. So it makes us wonder, what kind of machines did ancient builders have? How could they scale 
to create such gigantic pillars. I mean, this finished pillar must weigh about 20 tons. So how did they mount a 20-ton rock and rotate it? By the way, the assembly with the neighboring stone blocks is so perfect that we don't even know if this is a separate pillar at all. And if you look below, this gets even more confusing. It's just a giant block with many different shapes. I mean, where does it start and where does it end? Do we even see some joints? But at the bottom, it does give away that it is a separate pillar attached to the wall. I hope it was refreshing to watch these details about ancient technology. Please do subscribe. Bye.